what kind of servicing and maintenance does it require in the long run? What is the lifespan of it? How is it going to work for your house? See are the three things that you need to know if you intend to construct a biodegradable waste barrier digester for your dream house. Coming up right now in this video. The first thing that you need to know if you intend to construct a biodigester for your dream house is to know what biodigester is and what it does. You need to understand what it means when you say biodigester. What type of human waste management system are you comparing it to? Is it a septic tank? Is it a manhole? Is it the cover type of toilet? And then in terms of the treatment of the human waste, what are you going to get? Are you going to have it by the grid by itself and then break down by itself? Where is the wastewater going and basically how the technology works? So if you intend to construct a biodigester, you need to understand this. this. Is it the type that produces gas or it does not produce gas? When you say gas, what are you looking at? Is it the gas as an output for domestic use? For generating electricity or for what type of purposes so all these things are the things that you need to know if you intend to construct a biodegradable waste by your digester the second most important thing that you need to know if you intend to construct a biodigester is to know the cost of it how much is it going to cost you to construct one in terms of the cost and the pricing what are you going to compare it to are you comparing it to a septic tank at the same time are you comparing it to a covert? Or are you comparing it to what type of technology in terms of the waste treatment system that you are getting? The amount of time involved in the construction of it, that's how long it takes for you to be constructed, the kind of materials that you need to have it constructed, the land size, the space that you need before you have it constructed. And is it something that you think you can afford comparing it to whatever other technology that is available on the market? So if you want to construct a biodigester, you need to know the cost of it. If you are getting any value so far from the video, then please go ahead and give a thumbs up and like this video. And if you are also new to the channel, then you can subscribe and be part of this growing community of biodigester lovers. Nice. The third thing that you need to know if you want to construct a biodigester for your dream house is to know how to service it. What kind of servicing and maintenance does it require in the long run? If it's here, you know, baby, this here, are you okay? So, how do I ideally know? And I say, oh, ha. Well, it's always best say, baby, I'm fishing. Or closer to the middle, no? Now, it must spread it. You know, you say, ha, straight, exactly. All right. You understand, boy, boy. What is the lifespan of it? How is it going to work for your house? The do's and don'ts of a biodigester. What kind of materials can be allowed in it? And what kind of materials cannot be allowed in a biodigester? The advantages and the disadvantages are all things that you need to know if you intend to construct a biodigester. And if an installer tells you that you have to do maintenance at what time span, what lifespan are you looking at? having it done and the last part of the digester itself after it's been constructed you need to have the materials the bedding materials replaced at what time are some of the things that you need to know if you intend to construct a biodigester for your dream house this channel is dedicated to those who are interested in constructing biodigesters and those who are interested in using it as an option in terms of their human waste management system the next video that's going to show will explain to you exactly how biodigesters work and how you can use it as a human waste treatment option when you are constructing a biodigester and then you are connecting it to a soak hole pit. Remember we have the two different types or the three different types of soakaways that you can use for your biodigester. So basically you do have the traditional soak hole pit and then you have the connection to a traditional soakaway and then obviously the one that you can connect to a gutter or a drainage system. So right now I'm at the site working and I thought that let me just come and do this video and show you a simple trick that I've realized and I'm, I'm using in terms of constructing the so-called pit.
for the bio digester. So usually what happens is that if you do a bio digester for a house and the land is good, it's sloomy, it's not clay, it's not waterlogged, it's on a hilltop and all a mountainous area and then there's a lot of rocks and then you can work well, you can simply do a soak hole pit for the digester. A soak hole pit is the one that you have to put the stones in it and then use a rubber or carpet to cover the top before the sun goes on it. And it's hidden and it's buried under the earth surface and then the leche pipe will be connected into it. So in this case, what it means is that the water from the digester goes through the leche pipe into the soak hole pit. And then because you are putting some stones and some blocks, broken blocks in it, it will help seep the water slowly into the earth surface and then the digester will work fine right so the remember that's how we learn how to construct a biodigester and there are some cases that it will not work so if it's not going to work for you it means that you need a traditional soak away or you need to have it pumped out in the soak away or you need to have it connected to a drainage system which is for a longer use but there are some situations that you meet and then the digester is only for one toilet or it's for only one or two people use and then the land is also good as well. Instead of having an additional cost of constructing a traditional soak away, you can do the soak hole pit for the person. So in this case, what I've realized and what I do now is I put a vent cap at the end of the leche pipe or the four inch pipe that leads into the soak hole pit so that dirt and debris will not enter and block the wastewater or the black water from entering the soak away or the soak hole pit that I've dug. Usually what happens is that after some time, four or five years, six years, depending on the users or the capacity of the people who are using the, the register, you get choked because sometimes you do pavement on that place or you do some tiling there and then you cover it and it's underneath the earth and at time will come probably some debris and things will enter it and then you get choked. But in this case, when you do construct the soak hole pit, just get the a vent cap, the, either the four-inch pipe vent cap or the three inch pipe vent cap, depending on which one you're using, actually on the shape pipe, and then you put it at the end of it, and then you lay it into the soak hole pit before you put the stones around it, put the stones under it, and some on it, and then you put the rubber on it nicely, and then you cover it. What it does is that it guarantees the long term use of this particular soak hole pit, and then your digester is guaranteed for a longer use for you and the, the client. Or the homeowner you are doing this particular bio digester for this is a channel dedicated to the construction of bio digesters and for homeowners who are interested in using it as an option as a means in terms of managing their human wastewater if you are new to the channel subscribe and the next video showing will give you a better idea and understanding of how bio digesters work and how you can use it as an option in managing your home and your wastewater